I don't know if this appeared in the LA Times. But I think it was the headline they caught everybody's attention. Here's the headline. Get real. Marriage is a business. <laughs> Written by a female, by the way, Liz. No hyphen, Pulliam Weston. And here it is. Now, by the way, you'll hear the first line of this story. And you'll say, well, that's compelling. Uh, I will tell you why it's not true coming up. Says here, marriage makes people richer. Not all marriages, of course, and richer is relative, but overall. People who get married and stay married build significantly more wealth than single folks. Then she has some bullet points. The median net worth of married couple households in the latest Census Bureau wealth study conducted in 2002 was $101,975. For single men, median wealth was $23,700. For single women, 20217 Now let's stop right there. First of all, most of what they call single men and single women are 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old. Of course, they could have a lower average income. Demographically, that's just the fact. So there's nothing compelling about those numbers. Another bullet point here, it says a 15-year study of 9,000 people found that during that time, people who married and stayed married built up nearly twice the net worth of people who stayed single. I'll explain that to you in a second also. Even when all other factors are held constant, stuff like income and education, just the fact that they were married contributed to a 4% annual rise in these couples' wealth. Well, again, you'll have nearly twice the net worth of people who stay single because it's two people together. You're adding those up. Uh, of course, the net worth is owned by two people. So it's like having half as much if you got divorced. So what if you have twice the net worth? When you get divorced, you're going to be behind the eight ball, Jack. Another bullet point in this story. Wealth declines typically started four years before a divorce was final. And the breakup ultimately reduced the typical's net worth by 77% of that of the average single person. Now again, that that sentence doesn't make sense. It's not clear. Eh. It's not clear. So it goes on from here. It says, of course, most people don't marry for money and we have some nasty names for people who do. Gold digger, black widow, gigolo. I don't agree, by the way. I agree men don't marry for money, and that most women do. Bottom line. Says here, but marriage is far more than a romantic arrangement. It has legal and financial ramifications as well. Those who ignore the business aspects of marriage do so at their own peril, as that divorce statistic shows. I've, <coughs> this is Liz Pulliam... Uh, Liz, uh, what is her name? Liz Pulliam Weston? Yes. Stop with all the names already. Uh, it goes on to say that I've been thinking, she says, about this as I've watched the reaction to my colleague M.P. Dunleavy's column, How to Leave Your Husband. I didn't read that. I think it was on vacation when that came out. Or I'm not married, so it really didn't have any relevance to me. Says here, many people seemed shocked. By the advice that women, and men too for that matter, should prepare themselves financially before ending a marriage. The notion struck these folks as cold and calculating. My take, says Liz Pulliam Weston, 
I think a lot fewer marriage would end if in the beginning people would think more objectively about finances and how they were going to handle them. Love does not conquer all. If you and your soulmate can't figure out how to paddle in the same direction, you'll wind up going in financial circles or, to extend the metaphor painly, painfully, down the drain. She says, I speak not just as someone who has covered issues surrounding couples and money for years. I speak also as someone who's been happily married for more than a decade. She says, I've learned that you don't have to have the exact same approach to money to succeed. I'm a saver. Hubby's more of a spender, she says. But you do have to be willing to listen to each other, compromise, <laughs> save me, and put a plan into action. She says, here are the business skills I think are most important. And a bullet point here. Do your due diligence. Here's the least romantic date idea in the world. Now, who's been telling you this? Sit together at a computer and pull your credit reports. <laughs> then prepare a list of what each of you owns and owes. In other words, your net worth. Finally, create a cash flow statement that shows your current income and expenses. You can't make a plan for your partnership until you understand your starting point, which is where you stand financially right now. By the way, a woman would not have to have a million or a billion dollars. Uh, but anybody with a lot of debt, anybody with a less than stellar FICO score, I wouldn't have a relationship with them, much less marry them. Forget it. And I would say if, as this article says, written by a woman, that marriage is a business, when I am running a business, I am looking for qualified applicants. And I say if I'm running a business, I want somebody who is responsible on the business side. So if I were getting married, heaven forbid, if I were getting married, and I see marriage as a business, I would want someone as competent on the business side as I am. And if they're not, I'll just have sex with them. I'll just bang them. Let somebody else uh, bail them out of their financial mess. Nothing unreasonable about that, is there? Come on. Another bullet point here, it says, determine the goals for your partnership. Successful businesses tend to have business plans, outlines of what they hope to achieve in the coming years. Your plan needs to include retirement savings. If you have kids or want them, college savings should be part of the mix too. Add any other goals that are important to you, such as buying a home or taking a special vacation. If you have any toxic debt, toxic debt, credit cards or payday loans, paying that off should be a priority. If you've ever taken out a payday loan, you will never have the key to my house. I tell you right now. <laughs> it would never happen. People who take out payday loans are just simply losers. Okay? If you have ever taken out a payday loan, you're, a, you're an idiot. Okay? You are uneducated. The uh, bullet points here continue. It says here, Create a plan to attain those goals. You'll probably discover that you have to prioritize. To save enough for retirement, for example, you may wind up contributing a bit less to your kids' college funds. Or your desire to get out of debt may mean putting off that cool vacation. Well, I don't marry you with your bad debt. I can go on vacation this year. I don't have to wait for anything. No compromising uh, required. Oh, yes. Another bullet point here, appoint a chief financial officer. Smart business owners learn to delegate and specialize, which usually means having a CFO. Having one person in charge of the day-to-day -day financial details, such as paying bills and monitoring accounts, also can help your marital finances stay on track. Another bullet point here says, stay up to date with your reporting requirements. Publicly traded businesses are required by law to reveal the details of their financial situations every three months, along with a comprehensive annual report. 
It's also important for married couples to review their finances together at least every few months with an overall financial review every year. This is particularly true if you take my advice to have a single CFO. The other partner needs to know what's going on even if he or she isn't keeping the books. Ethical businesses, by the way, don't try to fudge or hide unpleasant details in the fine print. Honesty about financial matters is crucial in marriage, too. Finally, it says here, work out your conflicts. No one is always right. Not in business, not in marriage, not in life. Oh, I'm always right. So I solve the problem. I, I live with the person who agrees with everything I say. Me. She says, partners have to figure out ways to communicate and compromise. Jesus. When business partners reach an impasse, they may bring in a coach or mediator to help them through the conflict. If you've got an intractable problem in your marriage, invest in some counseling. This all sounds painful, but it confirms everything that I've been telling you boys. Marriage is a business. It is not romantic. It is not a sacrament. It is not uh, finding your soulmate and living happily ever after. This is a business arrangement. It is forming a corporation. And I don't care how much money you have when you get married or if it means you'll have more money coming in. Because the bottom line is that most women are big spenders. There are some guys who are big spenders too, believe me. No doubt about that. But most women are big spenders. So no matter how much you're bringing in, a lot of that is going to get spent. And then when you get divorced, you're going to lose a lot of it paying for the divorce. Getting married is a bad business deal for men. Yes, it's a business. When I invest in a business, I want my business to profit. I want my business to grow. I want cash flow to increase. And then I want to be able to sell the business off to the highest bidder. Marriage is not that kind of business. Marriage is like buying a used car. Or worse yet, a new car that loses 20% of its value after you drive it off the lot. It is a bad investment. Don't you think? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Like a Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. We are talking about a piece that appeared in the um, money section of MSN.com. May have also appeared in the Los Angeles Times by financial columnist Liz Pulliam Weston, and her piece is called "Get Real: Marriage Is a Business." Well, right you are, Liz. And uh, look at the average brain of the average female. Would you want to go into business with that person? Think about the last woman you had sex with, boys. If you were going to start a business, let's say there was no sex involved. Let's say it was just a matter of you put half the money in, she puts half the money in. And the two of you are going to start a business. Would you do it? Knowing the way women spend money, knowing the way women don't save money, knowing the way women don't invest money, knowing the way that uh, people who know about money believe that women need separate education about money, like the time Money Magazine put out that magazine called Money for Women, because the real Money Magazine, is, uh, I guess the words are too big and the pages are not pastel colors and everything, so, so the average gal would not be interested in reading that. So they had to dumb it down so chicks would read it. Seriously, would you go into business with the average woman you've had sex with? Now think about it. If you believed as this woman, this married woman who wrote this column says, and by the way, it's what I say, that marriage is a business. It's a corporation you are forming. When you think back on the women you've had sex with, how many of them could you see yourself starting a business with? And the answer is not many, if any at all. Not in a million billion years would I start a business with most of the women I've known. Because most of them don't know about numbers, don't care, don't care about saving, don't want to know how sausage is made, don't want to know how money is created, how wealth is created. They just want you to have it. Number one, they want you to have wealth. Number two, they want you to turn it over to them. So they can spend it as mad money. Bottom line.
fine. Seriously. I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm exactly right about this because I gotta tell you something. I, all I think about when I see women is having sex. When guys get married, they don't realize they're having their pockets picked. They're having their pockets picked. And all these stories about how much more net worth you're going to have when you're married, it's meaningless. If she's spending the money, and if in a divorce you're going to lose that money, and if in a divorce you're going to end up poorer than the average single person, then what is the point of getting married? What is it? It's so unromantic. Yes, it is unromantic. You're right. It is unromantic to get married, girls. It is. Especially if you know uh, what exactly is going on, which is essentially the transfer of wealth from us to you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey there, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, just hearing what you had to say, and uh, I really disagree with you. I feel like some women are just as capable of making good decisions with their money as men are. Yes, and they are lesbians, fat women, fugly women. Uh, the kind of woman you would find attractive enough to have sex with, generally not. Well, not in all situations, though. I mean, generally... I didn't use the word all. I'm using the word generally. And ge things that are general are generally true. You know, uh, my mom is uh, has been in this country for 30 years, and she makes much more money than my father does and is the breadwinner. But how often is that the case? How often? I think it's very often. Well, I mean, if I mean, that's true, then why do they say that women earn 72 cents for every dollar a man makes? How could that possibly be true so often if women supposedly make so much less than men? Um, are you looking at colleges in America these days? It doesn't There's matter whether women go to college. Food. It doesn't There's matter. Doesn't matter. If they don't work, if they don't work full time, if they don't take jobs that are risky, dangerous, or what have you, the way men do, they will never make as much money as men. It doesn't matter if they go into college. Well, how many of the women, how many of the women going to college are studying English literature, poetry, psychology, political science, and other things that have no uh, uh, benefit in the corporate world. Is that what it's all about, corporate? corporate? Yes, yes, it's all about making money. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. I would, I would never want to work a corporate job, Tom. I think that that's the most... Well, that's, that's wonderful. I'll see you in the poorhouse. I'll, I'll wave at you and Ed McMahon at the freeway underpass. Not not necessarily true, Tom. I mean, corp corporate jobs, uh, you could work at Walmart. You're considered working a, a, a corporate job. Oh, I, mean, who, I have a corporate job, and I can buy and sell you. You do, Tom? I haven't worked a day of my life, but I have a great bankroll. Yeah, what do you do? What do I do? I do a lot of odd jobs. I work, <laughs> eBay, I work on eBay. You just I said you haven't worked a day in your life. Market. You just said you haven't worked a day in your life. Well, I, it's not really considered work. I never stepped foot into an office. It doesn't mean it's not work. So, me pressing buttons on the internet is not really considered working. Well, you also have to think about what buttons you're going to press. And how much do you make, anyway? Tom, um, I'm 22 years old and I have over $60,000 in the bank. How much do you make per year today? Close to 60. Ooh. In L.A., that, that barely gets you by. But, Tom, I'm 22 and I'm still I don't school. care how old you are. What school are you going to? I go to USC. And what are you studying? Poetry? <laughs> Not quite, Tom. What are you I'm studying? Like studying business. I'm going to get it. Oh, MBA. you just told me that it wouldn't make any sense to be uh, studying for a corporate job. What do you think people who study business are doing? They're either forming corporations or working for them. That's the, last, that's the one thing my mom told me. Never work for anyone else. Yeah, well, great. Hopefully you'll form a corporation and make a lot of money. But you know what? Most people don't have that much uh, drive or ambition. Good advice, Tom. Yeah. Mora. He's the president of nothing. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let me say hello to Mike. Now, Michael is gone, Mike, but what did you want to say? 
Hey, Mike. Uh, hey, Tom. Uh, yeah, this is Mike. First time uh, caller, long time listener. I just like to say that uh, the only time I'd go into business with women is if I'm their pimp and they're prostituting for me. <laughs> That's the only time. Other than that, I would not trust a female with my dough. And even then, you can't let them count the money. That's right. That's right. They get sticky fingers when you know when they get a hold of it. If they've done it right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, and uh, with this guy that he was talking about, you know, women going to college, that has nothing to do with it, because men, you know, they get, in corporate America, are always going to get paid more than females. Because men are going to show up every day until they, they die, because right. we have no choice. And the reason that, uh, that, that, that females are in the office is because they wear this skimpy outfit and showing their breasts all around, you know, they're, they're more of an accessory to keep the men motivated and keep them going. Many of these women eventually will work part-time or will quit altogether. Or they'll meet Mr. Wrong there at the office and uh, go marry him or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, these guys, these, these, uh, some of these guys, they, uh, they're they really upsetting me. Well, I'm glad I shared, uh, shared it with you, Tom. I had to get that off my chest because this guy was really, uh, you know, giving me a headache. Sounds like he was pissing you off. Yeah. Big time. Hi, Mike. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Uh, <laughs> a marriage is a business, yes. And if you think of it as a business, boys, here's where the rubber meets the road. Here is how you will remind yourself not to get married because you are forming a corporation where she is going to own 50%, and yet she may not put in 50% of the capital. Not to mention the fact, uh, how many women have you banged who you think are good business people? Think about it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Adam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Uh, first time, long time. I just uh, wanted to say I uh, have a summer job working as an analyst at Merrill Lynch. And uh, I'm going to say 95% of the people in the office make any sort of money are men. There's the only, only people in there that our secretaries are women and the men are the only ones that uh, that are getting these high paid financial jobs in corporate America. I'm sure that's true. I mean, when I watch uh, CNBC and they show these guys reporting for the pits at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, look at the background. It's I'm guys. Cool. I know. And, I, and uh, I go to an Ivy League school and I'm going to say I would probably probably bang 10 girls in my 5,000 person class. Yeah. Because that's, that's the intelligent women that you'd want managing your money, but, you know, they're not attractive. How many women have you uh, dated that you would trust owning a business with you? Zero. Yeah. Absolutely not. So if marriage is a business, does it make sense to get married? <laughs> not at all. Yeah. No. Well, that's all I have to say. Can you take me out? Uh, just blow me up. I certainly can. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like is show. From Holly, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number. We're talking about a piece that says that marriage is a business. I agree. How many women have you bought that you were doing the business with? Seriously. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Jake on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? It's going great. So, uh, I think I'd be fecal and feeble and they don't, uh, you know, pay attention to much, but uh, I've got one that has a six-figure salary as an architect and uh, I'm still currently in college finishing my bachelor's in uh, business administration. And she lets me do what I want with the money and says nothing about it. If she, I say jump, she asks how high. For, for now, until she decides that she wants to have kids and stay home and you're the only one working. And that day will come. Well, wouldn't it be, they get, they get paid several, they get paid leave at work for pregnancy, so then I'm still getting paid. Assuming she goes back to work and there's no guarantee of that. How would she not go back to work as an architect when you have... And what's not to go back to? Many don't. 
Many want to stay home. Many want to stay home breastfeeding and taking the kid to daycare and soccer practice and what have you. But you'll find out when you get there. See, but I think it's I think it's the uh, the the ones that she was not born in this country. And I think when you find one of those that have come here, found success and worked hard at it, but they still hold that good moral standing that the men is the higher power in the family in the household, then they do still curtail to that. And if you said go back to work, you need to go back to work. We need more money. We do not have enough. What country and, is she from? Uh, the Philippines. Philippines. Okay. So, I, mean, they, I mean, they have a good... From the Philippines, the girls there, they're very, you know... Obedient? Uh, they're very good, be, you know, listening to the men's wishes. So you're saying she's obedient? Yes. And she will obey your order. I what what more could a guy want? Well, you're saying that. Uh, we'll find out if you make less money than she does. We'll see how obedient she is. That that would probably be the deciding factor, and I would agree with you on that. If you know, came to be that I wasn't pulling out, you know, as high as the six figure as she was, it could become a situation. Well, what do I need you for? Well, there you go. I do see that. You know, there are there are different intricacies that could come into play but you you know tackle those when you come to them until then you live the good life and once it gets sour you make sure you have your contingency plans and you walk out a free and clean man and uh, when are you planning on getting married ah i do not see that date anywhere near my future i'm way too young for that and uh, hopefully she's living in her own place and she's yes. in the philippines probably living with her parents i imagine <laughs> yes you are correct there we go experience tells son. yep <laughs> And I can tell you have that. I definitely agree with you there. Make sure you don't do anything to convince her otherwise. Let her stay there as long as she'll stay there. <laughs> All right. You take care, Tom. Uh, take me out with uh, Kobe style, please. All right, Jake. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Your beats in my heart. Oh. You know, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Gus on the top. Like your show. Hello, Gus. Hello, Father. Hello, son. You know what, Tom? I'm actually happy you uh, brought this issue up on the on the on your show because I myself never thought about um, marriage as a business. And you know what? You're actually absolutely right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we look at the divorce rate alone, I mean that 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 tells you. How many business deals have gone wrong, in, you know, in the past years? You know what I'm saying? And it's like these guys just don't listen up. I mean, there's guys that talk this fantasy talk, like, yeah, you know, my girl and I we're gonna get married, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that. And to me, it's like, you know, I kind of feel like telling them, you know, hey, I mean, do you understand that there's no guarantee that your marriage is gonna go? through the stuff that you actually want to go to. I, I mean, I just don't I don't understand these guys, Tom, and it, it frustrates me. I, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, well, I totally agree with you, and I keep trying to tell them. And they all think they're with the exception to the rule, which they're going to find out the hard way. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, and especially like at my job, you know, I work, I work for UPS. You know, there's young drivers, you know, making good money. And, you know, these guys do this marriage talk, and, you know, to me it's like, you know... You guys need to get your heads checked, you know, like, like, come on, bro, like, you, you have, you know, more ahead of you. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do in life, and definitely marriage is not something you you want to do, and these guys just don't listen. As a matter of fact, there's this one guy that I know, he just got married not that long ago, and he's already going through problems. And I'm like, see, I told you, and he just shakes his head every time he sees me, because he knows I was right. And, um... I mean, what can I say, Tom? You know the the most common email I get, and I'm not kidding because it wasn't always this way. And the, you know, I mean, the, wait, wait, I've told you what it is. <laughs> the most common email I get is people saying, "You were right, Tom. You were right. I I didn't listen to you. You were right." Yeah, and then not only that, um, you know, I mean, men always forget that you know that uh, women think emotionally, and you know, men think logically. Women think. Yeah, it's cute. I want it. It, lo it looks nice on me. Men think more like, wait a minute, what's the cost? Do you really need it? 
I mean, what's the benefit behind it? You know, and, and girls just think like that. They think about, yes, I, I, yeah, I, want it, I want it because I just love it. They don't think about the cost. They don't think about anything else but, but that. And, you know, and then, then you see where they're at. I mean, like you said, they even had to write that, uh, that book, um, you know, for women. I mean, so they can understand the terms. I mean, I mean if there's books that are being written for women... I mean, oh, are you kidding? Any... There are there are banks <laughs> and there are stock brokerage firms that have special seminars for women. Yeah, you know. Well, why does a woman need a special seminar? You know, money is a, it's all it's green pieces of paper. And it, it's the same for everybody. You know what, Tom? And, and the best thing is like, you know, it, especially like you, Tom. You you always talk about yourself. You always give, you know, your own life experiences. I mean, here's a man telling you his own experiences, and you still don't listen. I, you know, seriously, Tom, I don't know what to do, but these guys better do. They better listen up, man, because I, I don't. I, I don't know. They they just frustrate me. And you know what, Tom? You that, that's where you're gonna differ, you're gonna see, you know, the winners and losers. The winners, the guys who listen to a lot of the financial advice you give. The losers are gonna be shining my shoes. Yeah, you go exactly. They, they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be detailing your Lexus or giving giving uh, your Lexus some, uh, uh, maintenance service. They're gonna be asking me if I want the the lemon or the cherry air freshener. <laughs> uh, the pina colada, sir. <laughs> Oh, Tom. Well, you, you have a great uh, you have a great day, Tom, and um, take me out uh, African travel style. Here you go, Gus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Pedro on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Pedro. How you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, I just wanted to call in real quick before work and say, um, I think marriage is a corporation like you do, and I think that we should just outsource it to Asia like we do everything else. I, well, I've been outsourcing for some time now. <laughs> I have been outsourcing uh, most of the heavy lifting to Latin America, and I must say I've been very happy with the results. Well, you know, I'm a Hispanic myself, and I, you know, I, I, I don't like the results with Latin America, but I do see your point. I go out with the Asian girls, and they, yeah, I mean, you know. So you're going to be outsourcing to the Philippines. Now, in my case, I outsourced to Japan or Mongolia. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with little Mongolian beef. Not at all. And by the way, the most obedient of all the Asians. I love when they're obedient. <laughs> yeah, man. She said, one time I said, why do you want to cut? She said, because I am woman. Ooh. <laughs> I have to be that way. I love that. Oh, anyway, Tom, I got to get to work. Could you blow me up? I certainly can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. First time I ever heard your show. About time. Well, you know, I kind of was just wondering, I mean, all women are gold diggers. We know that from the time of Adam and Eve, right? So isn't it better to uh, embrace the institution of marriage and know where the man's place is and where the woman's place but is? But you don't anymore because women now are not uh, expected to or required to do the things they were required to do 50 years ago. But isn't that because you have a show like this that basically tells men to go out there and not get married and not no. um actually... No, because this was true before I ever had this show. <laughs> but if you condone if you if you go ahead and tell men not to get married and not to support women and not to support the functionality of a family unit and children, then we have the a total disintegration of home don't you see the kids are out there that's i i, I agree with you that uh, uh people being married is better for kids and certainly when you look at the results of most divorces it's better for women well, but it is not it is not but it is not good for men it is no benefit to a man but it is because a woman is supposed to take care of a man but they don't 
Or in this country, they just yeah. don't do it. Now, if we were doing our show in Mexico or the Philippines well, or we're Singapore, not in a third world country, but the, we're in America. Yeah, but that's my point. <laughs> in a third world country, women snap too, and they make dinner and they fold my socks. Well, but they and they don't get paid for it. Women in America again. I, you know, if you don't live with me, then we don't. Ha you don't have to do anything for me. You know what? I'll pay my own bills, and I will get my own socks so folded you're somehow. Live alone in an old fogey home until you're like. 85 or 90. Getting married doesn't guarantee that anybody is going to be with you. But if you don't, but if you if you demoralize getting married and you make all the men afraid of women, period. I don't, they shouldn't be afraid of women. They just should not get married. <laughs> so no kids, no marriage, and then that's the end of mankind. It's not the end of mankind because, unfortunately, although I would love it, 100% of all men don't tune in. So therefore, <laughs> well, that's good because then maybe there might be maybe one. But 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 the people who are hip to the jive who tune into this program, they are not going to get caught in that treadmill. In, why do you call it a treadmill? Because why that's what it is. So abominable. Are it is a treadmill. I, I wish more women would get on a treadmill, but it well, is a treadmill. You have kids, right? Do you uh, support a wife? Does she make? Do I figures? what? <laughs> I don't support anybody. Oh, so you're alone. I, I am alone by choice. Oh, okay. Well, by choice, that's okay, but you're going to be alone forever because all but the I, thing are is, I, the only alone I am is that no one has the keys to my two homes. <laughs> that's the oh, only alone I am. To sneak in if I time. need somebody to come over or if I need to go somewhere, there is somebody available. <laughs> you mean like Charlie Sheen's, uh, I paid him to leave? You know what? I don't even have to pay anybody to leave. <laughs> I just think I really get funny. them I when I need them, them, how I need them, and then I get rid of them. But then you have you're all alone. I am not all alone. I'm alone when I want to be alone. So no kids, no family unit, and then all these poor guys that are out there that are listening to your They show. all wish they were me. <laughs> I don't know if they really do. Well, I then why do they listen? Why do we have so many men listening? Why do you... Uh, it's only men. I don't hear... Because the fact is, this show is aimed at men. Do you understand? We're, this show is done by, for, and about men. But how come you don't uh, endorse any form of woman except for some form of prostitution? I, I don't even endorse prostitution. I endorse women giving us sex for free and then making us a sandwich and getting the hell out of here. It just seems to me so redundant. The whole What's idea. What's redundant? It's re it's redundant that you make it like it's a corporation, and that's what it is. It's it's a it's a the woman who writes the column of the L.A. Times. She says it's a corporation, and I wholeheartedly agree. The Tom Likas Show.